Productions. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, man? Welcome back to another episode of Welcome to Elm Street. I'm your boy, I'm your host, Money Elms, man. What is good out there, man? Without there any further introduction, let me go introduce Gerardo Davila. What's up, what's up? G Money's in the house. Back oh, yeah. for Elm Street 2.0. Oh, yeah, 2.0, <laughs> man. Or where I like to call you Mr. Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Up. That's the nickname that I blessed you with, man. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, man, um, we got lots to talk about. Um, my boy's been in some uh, major films, and we're going to get into all that, man. So make sure y'all tune in, you know, stay there because we got a, a good show tonight. And uh, we're going to jump into what's popping in the streets. So we were just talking about Jamie Foxx, man. Mm. So... Um, you heard what happened. I heard he's not doing so well, or hopefully he's doing better. Yeah, well, right? there's 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 a lot of uh, rumors circulating right now on social media that um, you know he well he was and he was hospitalized. That that's a fact. But then there was those rumors that were like, oh well, he's back in the hospital and he's not doing well, and that you know even family members came out you know saying pretty much that. We don't know what might happen, but we're expecting the worst. Mm. You know, kind of always already digging the grave. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, what? what what's going on? You know, <laughs> but you know, his daughter came out today speaking about he's doing fine. He's been out of the hospital for weeks. So I'm like, well, which one is it? Can we get Jamie there? Say something. <laughs> For real, you know, can he make a statement? Yeah. You, you know, know, but, you know. Show us a little, little, little selfie. Hey, I'm good, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this, there's a lot of rumors circulating right now as far as why he's in the hospital, mm. you know, but, you know, it's kind of, you know, almost like tabloid yeah. type uh, rumors, you know, that, you know, he's expecting exposing, you know, people in the industry and that's why he's in the hospital. I mean, mm. nowadays yeah. you can can't believe all that. True. You know, social media has become like the the new sun. You know, you remember that magazine? You know, it's like a newspaper where they had all kinds of outlandish stuff on there. Yeah. You know, there's a bad boy in a cave somewhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're fun to read though. But oh yeah, you know what like, I mean. What who comes up with this stuff? <laughs> yeah, who's the writer, man? Is, was he smoking a fatty right before he started writing this? Because <laughs> I mean, it, like you said, it is entertainment. It, it's interesting, but you know, nowadays is so much stuff is circling in social media that you don't know what's true and what's not unless that person comes up yeah. and it's like clarifies it like hey check it out i'm here i'm alive i'm doing well you know stuff like that now we're gonna have to deal with some other things too the whole ai and deep fakes oh wow so those are gonna start coming out if you've seen them they're really good and they make you look like you said something you didn't okay hold on so now <laughs> not only do they have the the ai voice right now they come with the face now well they just take some video of you any video of you video of you, right? Wow. And as long as there's a clip of you talking anywhere, AI will, rep will replicate it. And they just type in the text and make them say this. And it's gonna sound like it's it, you. It's gonna move like you, it's gonna it's gonna be you. Wow, you know, it's funny cause uh, I had uh, I had that rap artist, uh, Little Will, that had that song, My Dougie. We were talking about it and, you know, he was saying that, you know, he had his, uh, you know, Alexa would open up his doors and everything. Mm -hmm. He had all that stuff, the whole setup. He's like, nah, he had to take it off. Because he's like, nah, now they can repl replicate my voice and some stranger's going to walk I in my house. I didn't think about that. You're right. You know? And then, you know, I even I even made a comment like, <laughs> it's crazy. Somebody could get on the phone acting like you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's say you have kids. Oh, I'm going to to pick them up. Can you have them in the front? You know, this is a family emergency. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull up and pick them up. So that's the new scam right now is the, um, they're, they're pretending to be a loved one, a family member. They're calling you and they're like, I'm in the hospital. Uh, I can you send me some money. And they're hearing your voice. And so people, a couple of people got, uh, they didn't fall for it. So immediately they're like, what? 
thankfully there's GPS. I could check where you at. No, he's at home. What, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Called, hey, are you somebody just you just called me or who somebody <laughs> called me something like yeah. you and wanted all this money? I'm fine. How did that? How did they do that? What they weren't aware that this AI thing is they're using AI. Wow. There's so much going on, and so and I'll <clears> touch <throat> on that too with uh, with act, what's going on with acting because that's affecting us too now. They're trying to get us to sign our vo- our likeness of our voice, the rights away. So then they don't even have to hire us anymore. Now I got a clip of Gerardo's voice. I'll make all the commercials I want. He signed it away, and it's his voice. Wow! I could put it on a on an animation. I could put it in a commercial. But are you getting paid for it? Not if you sign those rights away. Ooh. So right now there's a union strike with the Writers Guild. Okay, the last one strike happened. I don't know a decade ago, and it went for 150 days. So right now everything's shutting down. Okay, so then that explains the MTV Movie Awards, how they were just showing clips, mm-hmm. you know. And I was like, <laughs> what is this, you know? And so now it makes sense that you said that. Yeah. Um, I did hear about a strike, but I didn't know it would, went into depth like yeah. you're describing the, it. The writer strike is a big deal. They're just asking for better pay and better residuals. Same with us, you know. I'm in the, I'm in the SAG union now. So, uh, SAG after, sorry. And um, they negotiate every year or every few years uh, com- commercial contracts, TV, film contracts, you name it, everything voiceover, anime, video games, all this stuff. And it's always just a little bit more. So, right now, all the um, studios were just bragging to the shareholders about all these record profits. But when it comes down first, us, the little guys asking for a little bit of pay, oh, sorry, we, we, we got to hold back. We don't have that money right now. But you just made a billion dollars on that movie. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're bragging. Yeah. And they respond to the shareholders, right? They have mm-hmm. to answer to them. And all we're asking for a little pay, you know, just so we can make our rent every month or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, pay our bills. We don't make, mil- not everybody in the business makes millions of dollars like the CEOs, yeah, you know, or the A-listers, right? Everybody else down the line is just making cover rent for the year maybe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. Because, um, you know, not too long ago, also, there was uh, what actually went viral was uh, the whole Rihanna deal, you know, that they were doing the AI with oh. her voice. Mm-hmm. And she was doing covers to the most popular songs that there is out there. <laughs> but I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? But I don't know if there's regulations on that yet. Uh, there is there is that's right. what they're trying to work out right now and the, and these studios do they're they're so greedy they're pushing back and so uh, whatever they brought to the table the writers said no that's not good enough and now we got to deal with this ai thing because the actors are like wait a minute they're, you're trying to replace us you can't replace us i don't think you can ever replace an actor you know why because in animation or even if you get a cgi version of me uh-huh. there's no soul there there's no spirit it's all blank in the eyes Right. Yeah. It can sound like me and you can make it mimic emotion and everything, but it's still not a human. Yeah. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and that's going to be missing. So you can't replace us. Plus, also with writers, there's emotion that's written into things. You, they already tested, they already tested AI. I say, write me an Oscar winning script. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And they wrote something, it was so redundant and boring. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even there yet. Maybe in 10 years, maybe in 20 years, it'll get good. But right now, it's, but still, you got to get that now. Start getting those regulations, start getting all those. Contract sign saying, no, 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 you can't do this. You can't do that. It's, it's almost like you actually had to trademark yourself and your voice now. Pretty much. Yeah. Like this is me. And, and if you want, you know, we already do that, but now it's going to be a, to another extent. Just to give you an example, I went into at the USA Film Festival a few weeks ago. I went and saw a movie called, um, uh, which one was it? Um, I saw t- a few, but um, Under the Influencer. Mm-hmm. And it was basically about a, a former YouTube star who was basically trying to make a comeback or was trying to stay relevant and was using her old tricks, whatever, she, videos. And everybody's mm-hmm. like, when are you going to grow up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're, you're doing this thing again. What's with the slime? You're grown. Why are you doing that? And mm-hmm. just things like that, right? Well, anyways, afterwards, the, there was a Q&A with the director. And she said, because there was a lot of AI and a lot of things, the technology involved in this. And she said, um, yeah, I have spoken to people in the industry and um, Americans like to embrace things. No, it's technology. Let it go. Let's see what happens. But already in China and Europe, they're already writing regulations against AI because they're scared of it. They know what it's capable of or what it could become. Mm-hmm. Right, but not here. They're not doing anything here. They're just unleashing it. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah, it is, man. That's crazy, you know. But 
But they said that that whole AI's been here for a while since I believe in the since the eighties. They've been working on it for a while, but now with these faster computers, the fastest computer. You know, China's got the fastest computer now. They're doing photons and lasers and to make it go even faster. They have the fastest computer right now, so we should be a little scared. <laughs> so you know, sometimes I do I do a lot of work in the commercial buildings, and I was actually working for a company Nokia. Mm -hmm. I was there, and and you know, I was in one of their offices, and dude had all kinds of fancy ass cameras, and he was looking up some screens, and what caught my eye was this camera, and I was like, is that like satellite imagery? And he's like, as a matter of fact, it is. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. I was like, so is it just like the movies? Mm -hmm. Can that camera, how far? He's like, well, if you're reading a newspaper, I can tell what newspaper, newspaper you're reading. From up there. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. He's <laughs> like, so so if I happen to look up, you'll know it's me. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. I was like, you can watch me just like that. It's crazy. It's scary, you know, that they have the power to do that. Well, you ever hear the, the help people laugh at the cameras in casinos can read the date on a dime? Wow. Right? That's yeah. how good their cameras are. But our cameras around here in the city, you can't ever see who the person is. <laughs> oh, right? Who the murderer was. Yeah, who's it? I don't know. He had a hoodie on and we can't see the color of his eyes, but go to a casino and they'll know everything about you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They got technology for that, of course. Yeah, so you know, but not to solve these murders, man. The big dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. You know, you know what's crazy? Speaking of murders, did you hear about the whole incident that went down over there in Allen, man? I was scared, man. We were literally five minutes away from there when it happened. We were oh, doing wow. a screening of my film um, at the uh, Cinemark right there, Legacy Plano. Okay. Right during the movie, as we're walking out, my daughter is like, did you see what happened? There was a mass shooting. When she said mass shooting, I was like, again? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, where? I mean, that's kind of common, right? I mean, yeah, in America, is. every week, they're, almost every day, it seems like, but mm -hmm. every, at least every week. She says, no, right here at the Allen Outlets. And I was like, Allen, what? Are you joking? Is this a joke? She's like, no. And then she showed me, and the first image she showed me was, sad to say this, but it was the images of the, the bodies oh, laying yeah. on top of each other that was, they were sharing, right? It was going viral. I was like, what? The? Right here? Down the street? That could have happened here. It could have happened wherever. This guy just decided to pick that spot for some reason, right? Could have yeah. been anywhere. It's terrible. It's yeah, it is, man. You know, condolences to all those uh, yeah. family members, you know, who lost somebody there, of course. You know, it's it's crazy, man. It's, it's always sad to, to see when, uh, you know, innocent bystanders get caught in the mix of somebody's uh, rage or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever mental issues they that person may be having at the time. You know, and, you know, they do say, you know, mental health is real. You know, and I feel like that has has risen ever since, mm -hmm. you know, COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, people suffer from a lot more anxiety than they did before. You know, and you know, and you might you might you might think your your friend, your cousin, your mom, your brother might be doing okay. But inside, you know, it's a totally different thing, man. But a lot of strange things happening since COVID. You see with speaking of sports as we were talking about sports earlier, a lot of professional athletes are having cardiac arrests. All over the world, different sports, soccer. They're passing out right on the field. You saw that, what happened with the football, right, this past season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that wasn't a, a single incident. This has been happening all over the world. They, they're just not talking about it. And this is all happening. At, this is all after COVID, post-COVID. So something's going on. That There's some strange stuff happening. Why are professional athletes dropping? You know, yep. you'd think they'd be the healthiest. I mean, they're, yeah, their endurance, their conditioning, they're, they eat better than we do probably, you know, and... They're just falling on the field. Boom. Many have died. I've, as a matter of fact, a friend who knows a doctor sent me a list with all their names and pictures and, and describing what teams they're on. I was like, what is this? She's like, shh. <laughs> I was like, no. Nah. Stop secret. <laughs> Let's get this out there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. The thing has to do with uh, the, what do you call it? Well, you know that COVID, the virus, it's are variants now, right? There's different variants now. So I yeah. think different ones are affecting people different ways. You know, the first one, um, I know I have some family members that got the first one. It was it was hard on them. And then I didn't get it for two years. I was like, because I was zinking up. I had all my vitamins yeah. on the daily. I would I would put little little piles of stuff for my family. <laughs> all right, get those vitamins in there. Yeah. And everybody was taking them. And, dude, I, felt, I was, and I was traveling during COVID. I was still working. I had producers calling me from different places. 
I was in Sacramento, I was in California, Oklahoma. Hey, you want to work? Yes, sir. Put on the mask. Let's go. <laughs> did you Did you get vaccinated? I'm vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I didn't catch COVID, but my family members did. Yeah. And they was they got it hard, man. They, they were in bad shape. So thankfully everybody's okay now. I wonder if those vaccines are starting to catch up. That's what I'm saying. What if it was that? What if it wasn't COVID? <laughs> It's a lot of strange stuff happening, man. Man, we're living in crazy times these days, dude. Trying to eliminate us. (laughs) Right? You're trying to get down to that percentage. Yeah, right. (laughs) We need to bring that from 8 billion to 7 billion. (laughs) It didn't work. We only only lost a million people. (laughs) Man, but still, man, that's that's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still, you know, feeling like all this is still finally coming back to normal, you know, even, but, you know, but it's crazy, but, you know, to take back to the shooting, you know, that's starting to become even normal. You know, like you said, there's one every other week, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's gun control and somehow they have an agenda and mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if you saw the the the, the families out in Uvalde and oh, people around the state went to their lead, you know their leaders and said uh, we need to pass this legislation to raise just to raise the age limit from eighteen to twenty one, and I'm like okay fine it's a start it's something yeah it's something, and it passed so they, everybody voted yes and everybody was screaming and cheering and everything all right still got to go to the house goes to the house shut it down wow didn't even give it a, sh- a chance. NRA, bro. I mean, it's crazy how they could uh, they could do that to cigarettes, right? You know what I mean? But you know they can't do that to guns. It's too much money, man. Too much money involved. Wow, it's scary. I mean, I just had this conversation with my family members. I said, I don't know. And my sister's like, "There's got to be a chance. Got You got to give it a chance. Stay positive." I'm like, "I know, but there's over 300 million guns in America, and I think a lot of people are willing to die fighting to keep them." Like they worship their guns more than anything. Like you're not taking my gun, and I'll, you got to kill me before you take my gun. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people think that way. I mean, yeah, I guess you know. It's, <sighs> but the Second Amendment is an amendment. Let's amend it. Because <laughs> <laughs> once it's changed, then it's yeah. the law. Because out there in, uh, I believe it is in Europe, right? They, yeah, no. you can't have arms. Australia, okay. As soon as they had the first mass shooting. They shut that down. They're like, nah, no more guns. This is it. And they've never had another one since. But they they handled it when it happened. Here, they just like, ah, it's just a shooting. Oh, it's another one. Ah. And then it just kept recurring, recurring. Now you're like, what do you do? Why aren't you doing anything about it? You know, you're leaders. We're, we're scared. I mean, those that weren't scared, like maybe I wasn't as scared before. Mm. But now that this Allen thing has happened, I'm like, that was close to home. That's down the street. Oh, yeah. So that's closer than hearing, oh, it was in Columbine. Oh, it was in New York. It was in Chicago. Like, wow, man. Or, or even, you know, down there, down south from here. Right. Uvalde. Oh, it's yeah. South Texas. No, it's we're okay. It doesn't happen. That doesn't happen around here. Because oh, yeah. even the guy from Allen that went to El Paso, remember that? Yeah. He was from Allen, went to El Paso, and then did that over there. But it still didn't happen here. Now it's happened here. Scary. Yeah. So let's stay positive. Let's, um, let's pray for those people who have lost people. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we got to do something. We got to vote. Oh, yeah. You know, if you're not registered to vote, make sure, you know, get registered. And, you know, every vote counts. Hey, I, re- I voted for the first time last year. I became a U.S. citizen last year. Oh, really? <laughs> hey, congratulations, yeah, man. man. It felt pretty good. I, was, I walked in there. And everybody, when they when I told them it was my first time, the whole room had to clap and do this thing. They're like, I was like, what is that? They're like, because you're a first timer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a steady ovation. I was like, all right, cool. Already, man. Well, congratulations on that, man. Um, So, yeah, man, you know, uh, we could all make a difference. Yes, sir. So, you know, if, you know, you're tired of things the way they are, you know, we could all do something about it and uh, get out there to them polls and, you know, make a difference. You know, it starts with that. You know, you're complaining, you know, you're complaining, but you don't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, hopefully, you know, the people behind behind the scenes that hold the power, you know, hopefully they, you know, they make some corrections and, you know, we get it right because we're losing too many people, innocent people. Yeah. So, um, 
for people that don't know, you know, the saying, like I said in the beginning, this is not Gerardo's first time here. You know, that's why he made, made that comment 2.0. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if you've been riding since day one, you know, I brought in Gerardo Davila a while back, you know, a good friend of mine. And, um, you know, I'm glad to have him back. And uh, we're, we're going to touch on his story, you know, and his success and everything he's, he got going on right now. So uh, we're going to take it back a little bit and start from uh, what sparked that acting bug. You know, it, it actually happened by accident. Although while I was in college, I did audition for Shakespeare on a dare. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and when I went, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no yeah. form, you know formal acting training. And so... I was told uh, that they needed help in our department, which uh-huh. basically said, you suck, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, all right, cool. So I told my friends, it happened. And I was like, they said, no, man, but they need people to paint. <laughs> <laughs> you know, working in construction, we paint walls, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, fast forward, that was in college and um, working, you know, corporate jobs. And um, it happened by accident. I mean, someone that was sitting next to me, uh, I was being nosy, wondering where they were going, and it turned out they were an actor. They introduced me to their agent. Agent laid it out. I signed a contract to be an actor. I signed and uh, immediately jumped into an acting class and um, started to learn the craft and um, immediately started booking commercials. First commercial was a Texas Lottery commercial, and everything just went on from there. I stayed in that acting class every week for 16 years, working on the craft because it's like anything. Um, if you're a doctor, you don't just go to college, graduate, and you're a doctor, and that's oh, yeah. it. No, you still got to keep up. You got to keep reading two hours a day, keep up with technology, keep up with what you're discovering. It's the same thing with acting. I mean, you got to keep growing and learning your craft. Um, commercials, TV, film, although you're acting, there's a different you know element in each one. In a commercial, you're do- talking straight, straight to camera. Right. In film and TV, we're talking to actors. We don't look at the camera unless it's that type of show, but those are rare. You know, there's a different where the guy turns and says something to the camera and it goes back to the scene, right? Yeah. Breaking that fourth wall. Um, started booking TV shows. Uh, one of my early shows that I booked was uh, La Ley de Silencio. They were doing a novela right here in Dallas. I got a little part in that. And I got that because I was doing a play at Teatro Dallas mm-hmm. and the cast, the director there Suggested I audition for that. I did. Got a little part in that. That was pretty cool. I was nervous as hell because <laughs> I was still young and, and green and yeah, still yeah. learning. Um, so I did th- theater early on, then started doing tons of commercials. I've always done commercials, industrial videos. So I'm in a lot of training videos. You could go to like to AutoZone.com. It might be American Heart Association doing CPR. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody today told my daughter, I just saw your dad in a video having an asthma attack. <laughs> I was like, I've never done that. And then she sold a screen clip. I was like, oh, yeah, I did that. that is, yeah. <laughs> I've done so much that I, I forgot what I've done. It's yeah. so much over the last 18 years. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, so now let's um, let's fast forward a little bit. Mm. And then I'm doing bigger shows, bigger TV shows. Uh, Queen of the South. Queen of the South. Uh, the Vampire Diaries. That's probably my favorite because uh, I got to do some sword fighting in that or teaching somebody how to sword fight. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and just it was just so, great. So did you have to go to some training, some special training? Okay, so get this. I booked Vampire Diaries. I'm excited. I get there. And um, they're like, hey, you got to – tomorrow you're going to do a two-hour training with the stunt guy, uh-huh. a swords swordsman. I was like, oh, sweet. I get to – I've always wanted to do that, you know. And I, I love shows that are like that with swords, like those old, you know, epic stories. And I want to be in that. I want to be in like a Game of Thrones or yeah. something. Anyway – Two hours. He's teaching me the basics of like fencing, how to attack, retreat, and swing, and all these different things. And I was like, got it. He's like, hey, you caught on pretty quick. I said, let's do one more. Let's record all this so I could watch it tonight at the hotel. And then when I come back tomorrow, I'll be set. I came back the next day, and the stunt girl goes, all right, we're going to practice. You want to go slow or 100%? I go, 100%, baby. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Did it everything. She's like, did you just learn this? I said, yeah, yesterday and last night I went over it in the hotel. She's like, wow, that's pretty good. So I got to do it on camera, and it was great. Go watch that episode, and you'll see. Wow. It's pretty great. So Vampire Diaries was great. Then um, you got Queen of the South. I get to play a part in that. Um, and then comes a nice, nice role. I booked The Suicide Squad. All right? So now I'm in D.C., The Suicide Squad, with James Gunn. But a lot of people didn't know is that I had already worked with James Gunn 10 years before on a little movie called Super. Super. Starring Rain Wilson from The Office. Uh-huh. 
And so for fans of The Office, Rain Wilson was playing like a, like the movie Kick Ass. Yeah. Where the guy goes and uh, and they're like vigilantes and just yeah. be fighting crime. Yeah. So that's what he's doing, except he's beating people to a pulp with like a wrench. <laughs> it's pretty bloody movie, but it's yeah. fun. It's a fun little movie, and I had a little bit part in that. Um, I met that's where I met James Gunn, and and, and um, hey, he's got a great memory. He remembers people that he works with that he likes to work with. He brings them back. Uh-huh. So when I'm auditioning. I get I get a part in the Suicide Squad. So when we get that, they don't tell you, they don't give you the script. So you just know your scenes, and that's it, man. Everything's a secret. Even the the name of the movie was a secret, so it was called El Dorado. Uh, so I'm thinking, oh, I'm making the movie uh, the the City of Gold. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> There's here's my old movie, right? That yeah. I get to be in my epic, and so and I get there, and I'm like, there's nothing El Dorado about this set. Yeah. <laughs> and then we start to figure out, oh, it's the Suicide Squad. Wait a minute, is Will Smith in this one? No, no, they replaced him. It's Idris Elba now. Yeah. They didn't replace him, but they he's not in it. And now it's uh-huh. a different character. Idris Elba and all these other people. And I was like, John Cena and and Harley Quinn's still in it. And I was like, wow, um, sweet. I'm a general. I'm like second in command. And they hire um, Joaquin uh, Cosio. Uh-huh. The, he's a Mexican actor that was from Narcos. If you watch Narcos, yeah. he's in that. James Gunn is a fan of actors that if he's a, if he loves you, he'll just write you into the movie. He wrote him into the movie. Oh, wow. He wasn't in the movie. He just wrote him in. Then I mean, I was already cast. And I like to tell this part of the story because we're walking in. So it's me, Joaquin, and then this Spanish actor who was a big deal in Spain. Uh-huh. And he's like, hey, uh, Juan Diego, I think it was his name or something. And he gives him a hug. And then he sees Joaquin. He's like, Mexico. <laughs> And I was like, okay, because Gerardo, what's he going to say? He's like, he grabs me by the arms. He goes like, Gerardo. And he shakes me. And I'm like, <laughs> you remember me? <laughs> it's been 10 years, right? Yeah. And then he puts his arm around me, tells everybody, yo, every, Gerardo's the only actor on the Suicide Squad that worked with me on Super. So all of a sudden, everybody like kind of lit up like, wow, you were on Super. That was a while back. Like, that's when his, he's still coming up. Yeah. So that was pretty cool, man. I mean, I felt you know, I felt special. And then we yeah, get yeah. to the first scene. I ended up in five different scenes in that movie. It was really, really nice. Um, he, I just remember him saying, "Hey, uh, make sure you get Gerardo in the back right there. Right, just get him in a little bit, you know, right there." I'm like, "Dang, he's trying to give me some screen time." Yeah, I appreciate it because I didn't have no dialogue in one of these scenes. I was just standing there, yeah. just listening to the other actors talking. So, what what an experience to be on the first blockbuster movie. I mean, the sets are huge. I mean. You can tell the difference between a million dollar TV show mm-hmm. to a hundred and fifty, two hundred million dollar movie. Wow. <laughs> like everything's bigger, the yeah. details, everything. I mean, they go all out. I'm talking catering is really different. It's way better. They got chefs. <laughs> <laughs> chefs. When you do an independent film, uh, there's no chef. <laughs> there's a bag of chips. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> hey, you know, but yeah. yeah, there's a difference. And you learn to appreciate these things, you know, and uh, be grateful for that because they don't always happen. So now that I've done the Suicide Squad, um, I've done, a, I was got a recurring role in Long Slow Exhale. It was a TV show that was on. Um, that was for BET, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, it was my first recurring role. That was really cool. Um, you see, I've done Queen of the South. Uh, I did a, an episode on Walker. And then um, I get Better Call Saul. Okay. That was cool. The season finale of the whole thing. Wow. I was like, and I wasn't as excited for this because it just didn't click what I was about to do. I'm just like, I'm just happy to have a job, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you're always auditioning. Actors are always auditioning. And, and sometimes you want a part so bad and then you don't get in you're like ah, oh, and you just kind of you're like what did i do wrong or did i not do enough or did i make the wrong choices and was my tape not good enough and you're just like it happens a lot hey we're human right yeah. you have emotions and so but you got to stay positive you got to push through that and that's that's the, that's the nature of the business is the good thing is that there's always work and there'll always be work it's not going to end just because you didn't get it uh-huh. another show will come around and yeah somebody might get famous from that one or or, or move on to something else but hey the opportunities will always keep as long as you're staying prepared and working on your craft. Just being the best you can be, man. Just bring it, you know. Don't get lazy. So at the time that I was doing going to do Better Call Saul, I got an opportunity to do Chicago PD. Oh, wow. And so they wanted me for a role. But the thing was, it was January. There were a lot of winter storms going through Chicago. Uh, and my agent was like, yo, you can't, you can't go up there. You're going to get stuck. <laughs> and you got to get back to New Mexico to do... <laughs> That and they were upset because I said I was available and I was still available. I was gonna make it happen. I said, listen, on my dime, I'll fly to Chicago, shoot your show, and come back and shoot my show over here. The, the better call song. Uh-huh. 
And my agent was like, I get it. No, <laughs> that's not happening. You're not getting stuck. There's a chance you could get stuck. We could, right? Mm-hmm. So she talked to them. They released me. I did Better Call Saul, which is freaking amazing, working with Bob Odenkirk, the star of not just Better Call Saul, but Breaking Bad, too. Yeah. He became a star out of that, right? And I didn't know this, but he wrote skits for SNL back oh, in the wow. day. Yeah, he's been around a while. They, they just made him an actor, like a star actor, because mm-hmm. he was just a writer, mostly. Um, anyway. All that. Bygones be bygones or whatever. I'm thinking they were kind of upset up there. I'm like, dang, did I just burn a bridge? You know, you don't want to burn any bridges in this business. So then she's like, don't worry. They, those shows is PD, Fire, and MD, Chicago, right? Mm-hmm. They've been going on for a while and they're going to keep going for a while. They're very popular shows. So then I'm doing a commercial in New Orleans and I have another audition and it's another PD show and they want me to put me on hold. And then that falls through. So I'm thinking, oh, man, they must be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get back home. Another audition. This time it's for Chicago Fire. And, you know, they wanted this character that was hard-nosed, straight business. I was like, I got this. Sent it in. They're like, you're on hold. Are you available? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I already blocked the dates out. I'm yours. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, flew out there, did it. Spent Thanksgiving with my family I hadn't seen in 20 years up in Chicago. Oh, wow. And uh, did the show. Dude, one of the best casts I've ever worked with. All those guys, they've been together for like 10, 11 seasons. Wow. So they're like family to each other, mm-hmm. you know. And they're jacking around, having fun. And I'm, and I'm all serious, like, get ready. I'm like, I wanted to yell out, hey, we're about to go action. We're, we're jacking around. <laughs> and the, the, the assistant director is just like, just hurry up. Just let them be. Just let them be. <laughs> this happens every day. <laughs> because they're so they're just used to each other. And they know they're going to get it done. Yeah. But I'm not used to being on, on a, 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 a group of people like that where I've been around for 11 seasons. Mm-hmm. And you can jack around and know you're still going to bring your A game regardless, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was awesome, man. I posted that stuff on my Instagram, the pictures, and everybody freaked out because – they recognize all these. I worked with this one guy that was, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head, but uh, he was on Sex in the City mm-hmm. back in the day. <laughs> and they would see that, like, you worked with that guy. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's this little tiny little dude. <laughs> yeah. It was great, right? So then this Suicide Squad, and all of a sudden I get a call. Hey, are you available for a movie? Shoots in Atlanta. Um, we can't tell you what it is. We don't know what it is, but. We think it's the director James Gunn. And I'm like, no, that's Guardians. <laughs> that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Because I already know he's already about to start filming that. Yeah, yeah. What else could he be shooting? He wouldn't be shooting anything else. So then my friend Giovanni Cruz, who's also on the Suicide Squad, squad with me, uh-huh. she's also from Dallas. She got it hired too. So here we go again, both of us doing the next uh-huh. movie with James Gunn. And she had already been hired. And so then I called her. I'm like, yo, I'm are you, you too? She goes, yeah, we got a call too. Same thing. And this time they're taking care of everything. They're going to fly us out there, put us up, everything. Uh-huh. So that was the first. So you know, you feel like, dang, did I just level up? Okay, cool. Good. I've been doing this for freaking almost two decades. You yeah. know, <laughs> It's about time. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. My time to uh, pay my dues. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. Been paying dues for a long time. And sure enough, it was. It was so. It was great. And then this this one's going to be even bigger than Suicide Squad because Guardians of the Galaxy has a huge fan base. It's Marvel, mm-hmm. and it's the trilogy. They're going to close the trilogy up. This is the end of it. And you know, people like Dave Bautista and Zoe Saldana. They're done with Marvel. They're done with these characters. They want to move on to other things. Mm-hmm. So the, if there is a Guardians of the Galaxy four, it's not. It's not going to have those characters in it. It could follow other stories. Yeah. You know. And I won't give too much away, but go watch the movie, Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the number one movie right now. Box office, baby. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on that. Because, I mean, I remember you telling me, you know, you were like, I got a major project, but I can't speak. I can't speak about it. You know, I got to keep it under wraps. And I was like, I was like man, you got to give me something. He's <laughs> like, it's like, I can't, man. I signed off on it. So I can't say anything, man. He's like, but I think he's, the only thing he's like, it's, 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 I, I believe it's James Gunn, but that's all I can tell you. No <laughs> Stop asking. But then I was like, you know what? And and then when I started, not too long ago, I started seeing the commercials, and I was like, I was like, let me let me text that out of those, like, you know, because I mean, I follow you on Instagram, so I'm always seeing what you're doing, and um, so I'm like, I got excited. 
you know, like I was in it. You yeah. know, I was like, oh yeah, because you know, there's a lot of times, you know, I'm I'm at I'll be at the gym, and I'm on the treadmill and I'm looking at the TV. And it's like, oh yeah, there he goes again. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I see you everywhere, man. You know, commercials. You know, and you know, uh, also got to see you on that episode of Cobra Kai. Oh, why did I even mention Cobra Kai? Yeah, I got to do Cobra Kai season five. How was that? That was fun. So, just to touch base on that, I auditioned for, I thought I was auditioning for somebody's dad. Because I remember the scene was in Spanish and mm-hmm. I was talking to a son. And I was like, hey, take the trash out or something. And and then I'm giving him some advice about something, some topic. And then like, hey, you put Cobra Kai. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Cool. And that has a huge fan base too. That's why it's going on for five, six seasons, I think, mm-hmm. almost, right? Then I get to Atlanta, <laughs> and they're like, you're the announcer. I'm like, what announcer? No dad? What's going on here? <laughs> so they send me the script, and it's like, I'm announcing a fight in Spanish. Mm. And I'm like, what? I was like, oh, man. And where's this taking place? Mexico. Okay, so this has got to be like Mexican Spanish. I can't sound Chicano or anything like that, right? Mm. So, I got, and I, you know, I got that. My Spanish is pretty fluent. And so I did my thing. I learned it. I even do some research, like how do announcers announce MMA fights? Because it was at an MMA fight, and the karate uh, Johnny Zapka, William Zapka, who plays Johnny, mm-hmm. comes in and he gets into a, a fight with one of the MMA fighters. So I turned my attention from the MMA fight to that fight that's happening off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right before I started, there was another second announcer, but he doesn't speak. He's just there with me, like he's mim- miming, like you know, announcing. Maybe he's the color color commentator. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, and he's from Mexico, so he's like an older gentleman. So I was like, hey, you don't mind if I run my lines with you because I'm doing it in Spanish and, you know, it's got to sound, I want it to sound authentic. And so I, I haven't had a chance to do a lot of these parts where I'm speaking Mexican Spanish. And so he's like, yeah, yeah, vamos. So I did it. And he looked at me, he goes, got it. And I was like, yeah. All right, I got a real Mexican right here. (laughs) Approved. (laughs) So, of course, I did my thing. Okay, so get this, all right? So, this is movie magic. On Cobra Kai, they had people up top. They had people around the ring. You know, you got uh, all this this movement, all these moving pieces. The fight happened over here, and they're filming that. I don't get filmed yet. They're filming them first because they're doing all these stunts. They're kicking and throwing each other down and wrestling and all this stuff. So, I'm watching the whole thing go down. I was like, cool. And then once they finally finished with all that, um, William Zaka was walking in front of me. And I'm like, good stuff, man. That's another nice guy right there. That's a nice, one of the nicest stars I've ever worked with. He walked up to me, he goes, thank you, shook my hand, almost gave me a hug. And I was like, dang, you don't even, you don't even know me. And I've met other stars that are just like, get back. <laughs> you That's know? my age. Yeah. <laughs> no pictures, please. <laughs> so er, then they wrap everybody, but he's gone. So then I was thinking, oh, maybe they went to a uh, break or something. And then the director comes over and he goes, uh, hey, Gerardo, sorry, but um, we already let everybody go. So you're going to have to do the scene by yourself. So there's no fight to announce. I have to imagine it. But I've already seen the fight. I already know how it goes down. Yeah, I yeah. get to see the real life thing happen. But now I'm reacting to something that's not there. Wow. So if you see it with the edit, it looks like every time he did a kick, it cuts back to me. Ooh, and I'm doing this. Ah, and all this in reacting. Dude, there was nobody there. So the reason I'm going to say this is because there have been actors that have complained about taping auditions or not having, uh, not being in the room with a casting director or something. And they're like, I I need to have this vibe or I need, I need another person there. I'm like, dude, sometimes we have to act to empty space or a tennis ball. Well, they might get a PA and be like, Hey, you read the lines. And you're like, it's not an actor. (laughs) (laughs) No, but you're going to, you're going to act. They're just going to give you the lines. So you know what you're reacting to. And so I was reacting to nothing, blank space. And I just have to imagine what I just saw 30 minutes, an hour ago, right? How it went down and do my thing. It came out great. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of it. So uh, Cobra Kai was pretty cool. Did, was, uh, did you get to meet Ralph? No, no, he wasn't there. Um, the kid, uh, Jolo Mari, Mariduena, which wow. is the star kid in that show, mm-hmm. which is the new star of Blue Beetle. Oh, wow. Him, I worked with him, and um, and then Johnny Williams Zabka, the the blonde guy. That's cool. That's cool. So that was yeah, that was a good experience. So uh, let's go back to uh, Guardians. Yeah. So in this movie, you you play what is it? Uh... So I'm a Ravager. I'm part of the Ravagers group, 
And initially, uh, uh, originally, my character's name was Old Ravager. So they made me look old, too. They even put bags under my eyes. <laughs> and my my uh, mask or my prosthetic um, had, oh, like, quills. So it made me, like, they were kind of gray, too. Yeah. So it made me older. Because there's other guy, other characters that don't speak that are there in the world. Mm -hmm. And they look just like me, but their eyes might be, like, uh, hazel or gold. Mine were gray. And they don't have the quills on their head. So I guess they were making me like a senior, like an elder kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it turns out I actually got a name when the credits rolled up. I saw it at the movie theater. It said Fitzgibbonock. And I was like, I got a name. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool, you know? That's cool, man. So it was a great experience, man. So how did that, did the whole uh, makeup process take forever? Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Sitting in the chair like we're talking right now. And they're like, what music do you want? Whatever you want. Just play whatever. All right, cool. And you're just chit-chatting. And they're taking their time. Applying things to your face. So I'll be posting all that on Instagram here soon because uh, I have the whole two-hour video. Wow. But I'm going to do a time lapse to make it back. Oh, yeah, yeah, make it back. <laughs> like, man, there we are, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's – and uh, a fun fact about this movie, it mm -hmm. broke the record for the most prosthetic appliances in a movie. Oh, wow. I think some, it's, in the, it's like 20,000 or something. I don't know. 177 contact lenses – uh, something like that. It's wild and every, a lot of practical effects. It's really cool. So you had to go through this process before and after. So they put the. the it takes longer to put it on. Mm. It, it, about twenty something minutes to take it off. Oh wow! Yeah, they use these chemicals and they literally peel it back. And with the Q-tip, they dip it and they're just peeling, 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 peeling. And you get all these residue on your face, and then they give you a really hot towel. Put on your face, wash it off. It feels so good because <laughs> you've been under this prosthetic for like ten or twelve hours, <laughs> you know, all day. Um, just great, man. And I wear, I had to wear contacts too, and uh, in, like teeth, these implant teeth. Mm -hmm. So they mold, they did a mold of my teeth, and it made these really nasty, ugly teeth. Those hurt because it rubs up against your gums, right? And then they'll adjust them, and they 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 sand them down and file them down or whatever. Mm -hmm. But still, to have them in your mouth, you know, this thing inside your mouth all day, so you can take those off when you're not acting. But the contacts have to stay in. So every 15 minutes, somebody walks up to you, you take your head back, drop some drops. All right, you're good. <laughs> Just to keep them hydrated. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool, man. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good to hear that the movie's doing well right now. You know, I still haven't caught it. So, I mean, I'm waiting to, to catch that, you know. And uh, do you get any good roles on there or? And what do you mean? And you get any uh, camera time? Yeah, so I got three scenes. Mm -hmm. First two scenes, you kind of, kind of look for me. I'm there. Uh, I'm holding this nice little creature. Remember when they're like, "Hey, you got, we got this creature you get to hold," and they hand me this pillow, <laughs> <laughs> and it's got dots all over it. And I'm like, "What is it?" And they're like, "Uh, show him, show him the little mock-up we got." And then they bring this little creature. It's got like a lot of teeth, like four ears. You know, they made it alien-like, but yeah. it's 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 furry. And I'm like, okay. So, like, is it nice? <laughs> Can I pet it? Like, because I want to know what I'm interacting with, right? Yeah. I don't know how. And so, that's the first scene. And the second scene, I work with um, all the cast, the entire cast of Guardians of the Galaxy, plus Sylvester Stallone. Oh, wow. And um, the first one was just, it was Chris Pratt and uh, Dave Bautista. Actually, it was twice. We had to do one with the stunt double for Dave and then one with Dave. And that one didn't have all the aliens. There's all these aliens and everybody's got these. It's so cool, man. All these different alien people, whatever, uh. with guns, <laughs> laser guns, right? Um, and then my my big scene, um, and I won't give any spoilers away, but it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> and I, that one I worked with Will Poulter, who plays Warlock. Uh -huh. Elizabeth Debicki plays his mom. Uh, Jennifer Holland, which is uh, James Gunn's wife, she plays a, um, a person who works inside the spaceship. I can't remember her character name. And then um, who's the other person? Oh, Nathan Fillion, who's uh, who stars in a TV show called The Rookie. Uh -huh. I don't know if you watch that. He's He was there. Really nice guy. Uh, and me. And so got this scene, and I'll just say, uh, you'll know it's me because I'm sitting in a chair, and, and, and it's going to go down. <laughs> <laughs> So it was. It's a pretty memorable scene, just as memorable as the one in Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh, okay, All right. I'll say that much. Yeah. You know, Suicide Squad. I had to keep that movie a secret for two years. Two freaking years. I'm trying to tell somebody I'm in a movie. <laughs> I don't make I'm it in out. this big movie, but I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> you're lying. You're lying. <laughs> so has your family seen it? Yeah, yeah. We all saw it last uh, Saturday. What was their reaction? 
It's a, I'm gonna tell you, I saw it three times already. I went, to, I flew out to Atlanta because it was a casting crew screening, mm -hmm. and I was hoping that the director and maybe some main cast would be there. They weren't, but he did a special little uh, video before the movie started, talking to all the cast and crew, saying, "Hey, thank you, y'all made this possible." Blah blah blah, and then the movie started, which is cool being around crew, and and possibly other eight people that played aliens or whatever, right? Because when the credits would roll, when certain scenes would roll, people would be like, ooh, like, we did that. <laughs> or the credits were like, yay, like, that's this, our crew right there. That's our special effects. Or that's, you know, yeah. whatever, lighting and, and gaff or gaffers and whatever. And so everybody would cheer for their, when they see their names come up on the credits, which is pretty cool because you don't get to go to the theater to be around the people that made the movie that often. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That took a part in making something so big. So many people don't even see these credits. It just goes on forever. Um so I flew out there, saw it out there, and let me just say, you'll laugh, you'll cry. It's that kind of movie. And then you'll root for him too. And then, you, and then I'm not going to say much about the ending, but it's just kind of like, and then it's got, you know, at the end during the credits, they always have these little scenes. Uh -huh. They just stay to the very, very end because there's a, a scene at the very end. And then it says something on the screen for you. It's like, dang. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's great, man. It's a great ride. It's fun. The soundtrack's freaking amazing too. Yeah, it's all they always are. The Guardians of the Galaxy soundtracks are freaking fun, man. Uh -huh. He knows how to plug the right song at the right moment. You know, a lot of classic rock, a lot of just those hits, man. He just knows. Does, does he still do the the main actor? Does he still do the the mixtape? You know how he? Yeah, he, except now it's, it looks like an iPod. An iPod. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and he's got like a, something like that. So you'll uh -huh. see that that plays into it too. Did you get to interact with, like with Dave Bautista? Or? Yeah. So that big scene, um, Sylvester Stallone walks in because he's we're the Ravagers, uh -huh. and Dave was standing right next to me, and I'm just looking up at him like this guy's huge. Wow. He's big old dude. You know, and he was just quiet. I wasn't trying to. You know, being professional and just like starstruck, but it's cool that you know. I'm, I'm let me just say this: it was so surreal because I'm like, how am I here? Why am I here? Yeah, this is Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, I'm not a recurring character in this thing. I just get to pop in, yeah, and be here. And it's like I felt like a fly on the wall. I'm like, yo, they're filming Guardians down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Dave, there's Chris Pratt. You know, there's Star Lord and and Zoe's character and Mantis and and they're all there. Yeah. And Sylvester comes in and gives a big speech. I was like, it's like, then pinch myself real quick. <laughs> What'd he say, if you don't mind me asking? Who? Sylvester. Oh, in his speech? Oh, he said this part oh. of the movie? Yeah, this is part of the movie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No, there was, okay, there's a funny thing that happened before we went to the scene. Um, there's another actor. Um, I don't think what his name was, but he, I think he's a comedic actor. And he's the whole time we're there, he's just cracking jokes and he's just having a good time. And he starts making fun of Sylvester. Oh, wow. <laughs> he goes, Y'all know how Sylvester couldn't say Ravagers? He kept saying Ravengers. Hey, yo, Ravengers. <laughs> hey, tell me about the Ravengers. No, it's Ravagers. No, the the Ravengers. And so he keeps making fun of him. And then here comes Sylvester. And he doesn't see him. He's got his back turned to him. And Sylvester's walking in. He's like, what's going on over here, right? And I'm I'm a little starstruck because I'm like, I've always wanted to meet him and, mm -hmm. or work with him. And I'm like, he's here? Rocky's here? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like checking him out. I'm like, oh, he's, not, he's a little shorter than me. And I was like, but he's got that swagger you know, when he walks yeah. in. I was like, whoa. And then I'm like, oh, he doesn't realize that he's making fun of him. <laughs> So I was, let me see what happens here, yeah, right? Yeah. And he goes, uh, hey, yo, Ravengers. And they just stare at each other for like a few seconds. And Sylvester's like, that look like, you making fun of me? And then he goes, hey, yo, Ravengers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, he's about to get knocked out. <laughs> yeah. And then he just like grabbed him and like shook him, like, get out of here. And then they just, <sighs> I guess they'd worked already together. So he kind of expected it. Yeah, yeah. But it was cool. It was cool, man. We're not allowed to have our phones on set, even uh -huh. though I did have it. They don't want to catch you taking pictures because everything's a secret, man. People leak stuff, man. That's why you sign an NDA. Uh -huh. When I booked Suicide Squad, an actor booked it too that was with some agent in Louisiana or somewhere. I don't, who knows where. He immediately added himself to IMDb and posted that he booked it. Got fired that week. Wow. Dude, you just got fired from a blockbuster movie. That made me <laughs> sick. So that's how serious it is. And I'm like, shh. As bad as I wanted to take a picture, those other guys, those other actors that are there that are friends with James Gunn, they have their phone. They're let them take the picture. Just try to get in it. You know? Hey, can I get in here? Send it to me later. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were taking pictures with Sylvester and whoever, right? You know? Yeah. It's good. But I did get lucky when we're doing my big scene. Uh -huh. James Gunn goes, hey, give me your phone. 
I think it was his wife's phone. Maybe it was his phone. I don't know. He goes, come here, Gerardo. So it was me, all that cast, with James Gunn. He took a picture. I was like, dang it. It's going to live on his phone. I'll never see that picture. Uh-huh. And I'll ask him for it. He may not even get the message, you know, because he gets thousands of messages. The other day, his wife posted it, and then he reposted it and tagged me. Oh, wow. I got the picture. <laughs> it's a pretty cool picture. So I, I just posted it. It's on my Instagram, so okay. you see it. Yeah, it's really, really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, like I said, I've been following you, your career, and, I mean, it's amazing. You know, everything everything that you're doing, everything you're accomplishing, you know, I already knew it, you know, that, I already knew it because I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, this, and I feel like this is still the beginning. I, I agree. I feel that same way, too, because I'm, this is my second blockbuster and I'm still not a main role. So it's like, OK, you can just go up from here. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm at the top. I'm, I still got to climb that mountain, but not far from it. Yeah. It just needs the opportunity. I mean, obviously, James Gunn sees something. So, I mean. He's not just bringing you back, just, mm-hmm. oh, I just need another extra no. over here now. So, I mean. No. If you look at, like, a lot of big directors, they have their go-to actors. Why? Because they trust them. They love working with them. They know what they're getting. Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you for trusting us and trusting in my my talent to bring me back and trust me to be on your big movie uh-huh. and your vision, part of that vision. And this guy is just, he's a mad scientist and. I'm just I'm just grateful that I have an opportunity like this because like I said, I've been paying dues for a long time and and to get this is a lot of people look at it and they're like, Oh, it looks easy, man. Hey, so how do I get in acting? And I'm like, you know, this took me 18 years to get here. Yeah. <laughs> so let me explain how I got here. Remember at the beginning, get in a class, uh-huh. work on the craft, go to all those auditions, constantly, constantly grinding, grinding. It's like salespeople, right? Just you gotta keep selling to get that commission. Well, I got to keep selling myself to get that role. Same thing. And it's not. Gonna, it's never going to stop. Now, people like Chris Pratt, I know he just said the other day, he goes, ever since I got Guardians, I haven't had to audition for a role since. <clears throat> well, good. You made it. I hope, I think I will get there too. I'm going to get that opportunity. Once that right opportunity comes, the guy from Breaking Bad, um, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. It's, I'm drawing a blank. The star of Breaking Bad. He didn't get his break. He had one break. It was he was on um, a TV show. It was a family TV show, I don't know, twenty years ago. And then Breaking Bad happened twenty years later. And then now he's like, "That's my big break. I had a break, but this was the big break." Mm-hmm. So it took that long to happen. You know, it took me this long to get this. But dude, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know, a lot of people don't don't get that. Yeah. You know, but it just goes to show what hard work and dedication does. You know, you got to craft, keep working, keep hustling, keep, you know, keep going. Do you still take uh, acting classes? So my mentor uh, passed away oh, wow. two years after the pandemic. Yeah. So we I stopped training there right at 16 years. And it was, it was pretty rough. I had another acting teacher in LA. She passed away too. Oh, she wow. was wonderful. So in 2019, right before the pandemic, I actually got accepted to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. And I went and took a course out there. And I went back again last year, took another course out there. This is a voice technique class this time. And so that's where my training has been happening now in London. I'm like, dude, I like what they're doing out there. They're, they're making me better. <laughs> and we're growing and, and, and adding to this arsenal that I can show these people over here. You know, If not... The, I'll take off over there and I'll go act over there. <laughs> Remember, I'm trying to get on that Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're doing the prequel for that right now. So oh, wow. how do I get on something like that? That would be so cool. You know? Yeah. Just, but work is work. And so I always bring my best. It's just like I was telling them earlier. When you started sitting down and you were just going through the, all right, Gerardo, this is what we're going to do. And I'm like, it's a man that's been doing this for a minute. Reminds me of me. I'm When I get on set, they're like, dude, you're so smooth. You got. I'm like, I'm prepared. I've been doing this for a while. You've been doing this for a minute too. Now it shows, and that comes with experience. That comes with grinding and and getting it. And now you don't have to have notes. It's all in your head. Same with me. There's actors that have to have a teleprompter to do their lines. Uh-huh. You know, you're not supposed to, but you know. And then there's people that just they they grind and grind it and just do this, knock it out, and give great performances. So, 
props to you, man, because I, I like what you're doing, man. Hey, I appreciate it. Appreciate yes, it, man. Sir. Especially coming from you, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I love what you're doing. I love your work, man. Um, as a matter of fact, every time I see you, you know, I, I like I like to show you off. Like, oh, that's my friend, man. I know him, man. You know, I know how to do it, actually. You know, so. Uh, you know, so everybody, you know, that I know, you know, I tell them, it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's my guy right there. You know, when I, when I see you in commercials and oh, especially when I see the, the movie, you know, anybody around me, like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. <laughs> you know, it's my friend. Look, I got his contact right here. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty cool, man. And I wish you the best, the success, man. So what can we expect from Gerardo Davila in the future, man? So right now I have I do have one more movie coming out that I I got a part in. It's called uh, Adam the First, and it stars David Duchovny, the guy from X Files. Oh wow! And but my scene is with Oakes Fegley, is another actor who's like a big Disney actor. And so the story is basically about this kid who's trying to find his his dad he never knew, mm. and everybody every man he encounters he thinks could be his father. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm one of those guys <laughs> and we're driving. I pick him up and, you know, he's hitchhiking or something. I give him a ride and we, and we have this nice little uh, talk where I, I'm being fatherly to him. And I'm like, no, you know, I think you should go to this house that you think, and maybe, you, maybe, maybe you'll find your father there yeah. kind of thing. So that's coming out here pretty soon, hopefully. And that's what's next right now. And uh, I am doing a lot of voiceover for anime. So anime is pretty cool. Uh, it's fun, man. You get to see these little animated characters and, yeah, yeah. and you bring your essence to it or, or whatever. Or you work with the director and you're like, what do you think about this? Let's go with that. And then you just build on that. And so they keep bringing me back. So I keep, I've done a lot of cool anime stuff that I wasn't aware of, I guess, because I was just one paying attention to that world. That's a whole nother world, mm. the anime world. There's a big show called Chainsaw Man. It's like number one, One Piece. I told my kid I was in these things, and she freaking screamed so loud, like you thought she saw Justin Bieber or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Calm down, it's just the uh, anime." She goes, "You're in that," and it was just just going crazy. And I was like, "Oh wow, this is pretty cool." And then all the high school kids, she told her friends, "You're in that," and I'm like, oh, "I did some voice stuff for it. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool." So that's that's some regular work I'm getting, and you know, hey, it took years, years to do this because they wouldn't hire me. I would always be on a commercial, and the the, guy, the sound guys would be like. You got a great voice, Gerardo. You should be doing some voiceover work. I'm like, can you tell somebody? Because they won't hire me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the one day when it clicked. It just clicked and I, and I understood what I needed to do, how I needed to bring mm -hmm. certain performance to that. Because acting for just on a microphone is different than me acting in front of you. Yeah. Right? Nobody's looking at my eyes. It's just I got to make inflections and do different things with the voice. It was when I started – I think it's when I started having fun doing it Then I realized – let loose. Be as crazy and creative as you want and see what your voice can do, how you can project different things and different ways, different emotions, and and just have fun and ah, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I started getting booked. I was like, oh, wow. I got it. And I understand this. And mm -hmm. now they, they like me, so they keep bringing me back. So grateful wow. for that. So that's what's Because cool. you also did uh, some voiceovers for some video games too, right? I did a video game called Smite. Uh, there was another one. What was the other one called? It was a different company. Um, but Smite is, they still do a lot of those. They just, they do different skins for different characters and stuff. So that's been pretty cool. Um, years ago, I was going to be in a video game, a big video game with a company um, that uh, Activision. Okay. But I think they scrapped the game. I don't know what happened with it. But that, that was kind of my first entry into it. And uh, then over here, the video game happened and then the voiceover happened. So that little steady work is nice. So, yeah, man. That that's cool, man. Um, I like, like I said, I I'm a big fan. Um, I like to see all the different type of work, man, that you're doing. And uh, what advice would you have for, you know, either people that are already in acting or trying to pursue an acting career? So, definitely, you got to be careful for the scams. One, you're gonna find all these companies out there that are saying. We're gonna make you a star. We're gonna make you a Disney star. We're gonna make you this and that. Pay us all these, all this money, thousands of dollars, whatever. Um, you gotta be careful for that because one, you don't have to pay anybody thousands of dollars to start acting. You could. You, there are resources out there where you can start being an extra, and I, I like to recommend people go be an extra on something so you can see what it's like. See if you like waiting around for eight hours to do a thirty uh, a five minute scene, <laughs> yeah. and see if that's for you. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you might discover something else along 
along that path where you say, oh, you know what, maybe I want to work behind the scenes. Camera person, assistant camera, the director of photography, what have you. There's all different, there's different wardrobe, costume, makeup, special effects. There's so many different roles in this in this business that you might find this and discover that you like something else. Maybe it's not acting, or maybe it is acting. But start off there. And then once you um once you do that, um, if you want to uh before you get an agent, you obviously agents usually don't typically hire people to be uh actors just right off the bat with no experience. So you got to find you a class. So if you're not in school, then go find an acting class. There's plenty of them here in town. Get into acting class, start learning the basis of acting, how to read a script, how to deliver lines, Uh and and start working your scene work. Start getting that under your belt because it's going to take time. And you have to remember this is a marathon, right? We're not going to get there fast. This has been 18 years in the making for me. But I was dedicated, and I I learned that work ethic from my parents. We just work hard. We just go after. We just how we say we get shit done, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So I was. It was one thing I learned was in acting class. I learned that always be prepared, right? Don't sh- come up, show up, and try to half-ass anything. Mm-hmm. My first agent said three pieces of advice: always be training, always make every audition possible, and update your headshots. I was like, damn, that seems pretty simple. Just three things. He's like. If you can do those three things, <laughs> yeah, go for it. So sure enough, I got into a class. That's the way I stayed in for 16 years every week, every week. Sometimes I come off a set, a commercial set, and I still go back to the class at night for the last hour. Oh, I wow. just wanted to watch other actors perform. And you can still learn from watching other people, right? Uh-huh. Like, oh, okay, I think I'm going to do that scene tomorrow in my class. So I got some notes already. I'm already preparing for the next day. Um, I was training up. Uh, Every audition that came through, psh, I was there. I made sure I scheduled it with work, whatever. Took the time off, made up the time, get to that audition because you need that experience of auditioning. Now, ever since the pandemic, things have changed. Everybody's taping their auditions at home. Okay. So you got to learn to use a camera and a microphone and get some lights. But it's got to be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. You ain't got to you ain't got to go all out and make it all Hollywood and everything. Yeah. Just some simple lights, camera and a mic, or just the camera. I'm sorry, that has a microphone. That's it. That's how I booked Suicide Squad. That's how I booked. Cobra Kai, that's how I booked Queen of the South, all taped at home. Send it off. And now there is a lot more competition because people from all over the world are auditioning, sending in their tapes. And sometimes they just look local. So it just depends. Uh It just depends what you're going out for. So my advice is, you know, get the training, find it. Once you're in the training, you're going to find that there's people there already who have resources and can guide you there too. And say, hey, oh, here's an agent that's looking for your look. Maybe, right? That's okay if you don't have, sometimes they do hire without experience, they'll, they'll, they'll sign you because maybe that you could be an extra because there's always need for extras in commercials, TV, film, right? Uh-huh. And sometimes there's not enough extras, <laughs> but that's a good way to start, start getting experience, start learning the craft, start learning how all these moving pieces are making this thing happen, this movie magic. Um, that, that would be my advice for anybody trying to start acting. If you're already acting and you're trying to expand, a look at markets like Atlanta. There's a lot of shows in Atlanta. You want to build your resume? That's a great place to be. Louisiana, New Orleans, that's another good spot. Uh, New Mexico, you want, if you can move out there too, a lot of shows there too. So now, like, remember I mentioned the writer's strike. So right now, maybe, hopefully, they'll resolve this soon. If not, we're looking at about the whole summer of a lot of things shut down. Wow. But that just means work on your skills. So for me, weapons handling, shooting a gun, that's important. If I get to set and I tell them I can shoot a gun and I can't, I'm going to look pretty bad to somebody, <laughs> right? Yeah. What do you mean you've never shot a gun? Oh, because you got to shoot a gun today. Remember, you're shooting the bad guy. <laughs> and you're holding that gun really weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the more skills that you can get, do and do well, whether you're swimming, cycling, boxing, soccer, sports, playing an instrument, wrestling, you know, martial arts, whatever, what have you, whatever it is, a skill that you have, those are important. Sometimes those things play golfy. I see commercials all the time for golfers or Soccer players, Mm -hmm. athletes, things like that. Be good at that specific skill so you can build your resume and say, I have all these skills. I can sing. Okay, well, are you baritone? Are you soprano? What are you? Great. I can rap. Okay, what kind of rap? Hip hop? What what are you? A spoken spoken word? What what do you do? Uh, I sing country. I sing Spanish. What kind of accents can you do? Work on your your accents. You know, I can do a Spanish accent, English, British, Texan, Southern, whatever. So build these skills for your resume. And then that gives you an advantage over a lot of other people. So, and that makes you very attractive to an agent too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 
So yeah, man. Um, there you have it, man. <laughs> I know I just dropped a whole load on everybody. No, it's, it's, it's cool, man. It's, you know, there's a lot of people out there trying to pursue the dream. Yeah. And you know, you just drop some valuable information, some gems that uh, that inspire actor that's been chasing the dream. Hey, you know, there you go. You know, he's giving you some some good advice that some people would pay for. You know, if you take his advice. And you run with it, you never know. You could be in a film with Gerardo one day. That's right. You could be handing me my coffee. <laughs> He's like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, I like the way you, you handed me the coffee. You know, it's great. Give him another part in the next one. Yeah, maybe you could uh, make breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey, we all start somewhere. Yeah. You know, I, I started off, I did a lot of extra work in my in my early days. I wasn't ashamed of it. I was learning, man. The the smart people will sit there and pay attention to everything everybody's doing and ask questions. Not bluntly, but like, hey, why did you do that? Or what is that? Oh, okay, great. Cool. Mental note. Right? Ask questions and pay attention and you'll learn faster instead of just sitting there, I'm on a movie. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> I'm going to go eat at Crafty. No, I do those things. <laughs> but that's because I'm already prepared and I already know what I'm doing. But in the early days, you, you, no, that's, was, I wasn't doing that. Yeah. I was just zoomed in on what everybody was doing and listening to director talk to people. Oh, so that means that. Got it. So when I get up, I'm going to look good because I already know what, he's gonna, what we're doing. Right? Paying attention to getting all the verbiage. There's lingo that you got to learn, you know, from camera people, director photography. Uh-huh. Assistant directors, they talk to you a different way, you know. So that's important. That's important. That's cool, man. Hopefully, uh, James Gunn, I mean, James Gunn, will be giving you a call soon. And we'll be waiting to hear, uh, to see what, what he so has too. in store for you, man. I put it out there in the universe. You never oh, know. Oh, yeah. You got to speak it into existence. I want to say that that's what happened with the Guardians because after Suicide Squad and he announced he was doing a Marvel movie, he didn't right. say what. I tweeted out, and I follow him. And he follows. I think he follows me on Twitter, and he goes. Uh, I said, uh, "There's an actor available here." Hashtag Marvel. Hashtag Latino actor, and he liked it. <laughs> and like, not a month later, I get a call. I'm oh, like, wow. "Oh, did I just manifest this?" <laughs> okay, but hey, you know, maybe I'm. My friend said, "Hey, Gerardo, you're in the club, bro. You're in the club. You guys are on. You're on your third movie. Gio, Gio's on her second with him. Like." Maybe. Let's see. <laughs> did did your friend get get her a nice role in, in Yeah, she she got that other thing called the the Christmas special. So oh, okay. did you see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in that. Oh, she got wow. to be part of that. I was like, ooh, you lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but good for her. Yeah. You know, it's great that because you know, we don't get to see a lot of actors from Dallas do big stuff all the time. Yeah. Right now we do have a lot of friends. I got a friend who got a part in the new George Foreman movie. which is pretty cool Um, my other friend she's in the new Ben Affleck hypnotic film that's coming out this Friday Uh today actually yeah she's in that us and the Guardians we're like dude we've been on each other for you know a good 15-20 years Uh Um, some of us and we're like man we're getting cool parts we're getting in these big projects Uh you know it's happening it's exciting and and you know you gotta root for each other because we're all in the same business and we don't always get something you know, uh-huh. so a lot of stuff happening. So. Yeah, that's cool that uh, you know your fellow actors, y- y'all share and, and support each other on whatever projects y'all come on. So yeah, that's that's cool. You know, I wish I wish uh, out here in the music scene mm-hmm. or in the podcast game it was the same thing. Yeah. You know, but for some reason, some people feel like they got to be in competition. You know, <laughs> everybody has uh, their own lane. And there's, like they always say, there's money for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm just glad that uh, you was able to stop by and share your story, your success you're having. You know, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Anytime, you know, you just call me up. Oh, yeah. I'll be back tomorrow. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you got any uh, special shout outs you want to give out there? Uh, to anybody listening, hey, go watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I promise you, you're going to love the film. 
It's a fun ride. You're going to laugh, cry, and hug, probably hug the person next to you. <laughs> it's it's great. Um, you get to see me in it. And uh, not this Gerardo, but a different version of me. And um, I play Fitzgibbonock. I'm a Ravager. And i uh, got a pretty memorable scene in that. So shout out to everybody uh, who has seen and followed my career um, from the beginning of um, – was my first one of my first movies was a uh, uh, Evil Behind You or Lycanthrope with La Lady Silencio and all those commercials you've probably seen me on TV uh, to to now and it's gonna keep going so I appreciate you anybody that has always walked up and said hey uh, I saw you <laughs> and I always have to ask what did you see <laughs> because uh, I've done so much that I forget you know yeah. but uh, yeah shout out to all people from Garland Dallas I've been here for a minute. Uh, met, I ran into a guy the other day. Um, uh, he goes, is this Gerardo? Gerardo, Gerardo? Latin royalty Gerardo? <laughs> <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know, I was a rapper when I was a teenager. Yeah. We were part of this rap group called Latin royalty. And and um, we used to like do opening acts here all, all over Dallas. And I even did, we even did quinceañeras, man. We requested a show at quinceañeras. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll be here for a minute, you know. The career yeah. changed from music to acting. That's okay, but. It's a lot of people out there listening in case you remember those days. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, I also got a uh, a what do you call it? Um I was part of the I was part of the backdrop, you know what I mean? <laughs> On the Ley of Silencio. Mm. I got to be I got to be part of that with with the group Mexodus. You know Were you there? Yeah, I was but I was we had a we had a scene where it was part of the warehouse. There was a warehouse and there was they were having a, one of those underground fights. And um I just went, you know what I mean, to, you know, be with the fellas. Okay. And they were like, hey, we need some more extras. You know, we'll, we'll pay you. I was like, okay, you spoke my language. <laughs> you know? So I got to do a little bit of acting on that, you know, got to drink some fake beer and, you know, it was fun. <laughs> you know, so. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. Did you share this before? Um, I could have. I, I can't remember. But, yeah, it was, um, they used to have the clip on YouTube. Okay. You know, but, you know, I don't know if they took it down since because I've looked for it, mm -hmm. you know, because they used to have that little warehouse scene and you could see me right there in the mix. I guess the <laughs> I was making the proper noise that the director was looking for. Mm -hmm. and I was like, ah, yeah, you know, I was cheering, <laughs> you know, waving around money and, you know, and I got, you know, gave me some camera time. Nice. So I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, so you know, I've been on on, on set of that, so you know, it feels pretty cool. That's cool, man. So yeah, look at that. You We're never the know. same show, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> never know. I might uh, get my acting shoes another another try. Hey, okay. we'll see what happens, man. But uh, thank you again, man, for coming by. You bet. I know you're busy and everything, but you know, you always make time to come through and show Elm Street some love. And uh, you know, thank you again, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Elm Street 2.0, baby. Oh, there you go, man. <laughs> man, just want to thank uh, Gerardo Davila for stopping through on Elm Street, man. Like I always say, man, keep your ears to the streets, man. I'll catch you on the block. It's your boy, Money Elms. Peace. <laughs>